This episode of MMA Nuts is brought to you by Lisa, a better place to sleep. Save 15% off any mattress with code MMA Nuts15. Crowd Cow, the marketplace for high quality craft beef and meats from farms and ranches around the world. Use code MMA15 for $15 off your first box. Or Somatic, get crash free coffee. Save 10% off your order with code MMA50. Hostgator, one of the top posting providers around. Save up to 60% off with code MMA60. Defense Soap, the world's best soap for wrestlers, jiu-jitsu, and MMA athletes. Use code MMA Nuts for 15% off. Hey fans, this is MMA Nuts, episode 507. 507! My name is Ingo Weigold. I'm back with the MMA show. By my fans, for my fans, walk the line between serious and ridiculous. A double bump on that one. It's weird. I, I'm, I'm used, I'm like a Pavlog's dog. I'm used to hearing that music. And it feels very quiet for some reason right now. It's very strange. Because we didn't start with uh, the music. little Rusty Cage. Rusty Cage. I'll break my we always rusty start the show cage. with Rusty Cage before we commence said. Speaking of Rusty Cages, what about this weekend of football? Holy <laughs> moly. What about it? There's a lot of action. A lot of there good was, quarterbacks. I huh? think the, the games were solid. Um, I'm not going to lie. I liked watching the Packers lose. <laughs> fuck yeah i enjoyed that very much yeah go for that field goal you fucking dumbasses uh, <laughs> you're only down by eight it makes total sense with like four minutes left in the game made zero sense i think he was trying to put points on the board but whatever you can't win with three points and like they saw good though because then that means tom brady gets to go to the super bowl and it's the first time ever i think the they have what the super bowl one of the teams in the super bowl hosting it as a home game First time oh, is, that, ever. is that a new rule? No, no the first time it's ever happened. Oh, okay. Because it's all by chance. It's all predetermined, like, what stadium the Super Bowl is going to be in. And then Tampa Bay just happens to be in one of the teams. So oh. they, they have home field advantage for the Super Bowl. <laughs> oh. And you know what else was cool? How about all the fans in the stands and all these places? <laughs> like, they looked way over whatever. And I loved it. Like, fuck yeah, you got to have fans in the stands because it's weird watching hockey with no fans. Mm -hmm. I don't like it. MMA, I like. And how about, are we in a winter vortex? Are we in a polar vortex? Are we going to die? Is there a twister coming? Uh, well, looking at the forecast, they're predicting lots of snow, winter storm warning. 100% chance of snow right now. But I looked outside, it wasn't snowing. But I only had one inch the, at, the, an the, hour ago. The, yeah, same. <laughs> that could go either way, man. <laughs> yeah, it's whatever. Are you saying you're I a take grower, an inch an hour? You're a grower, not a shower. That's Is right. It, or something. Yep. Um, yeah, I don't know. So we're it's winter, it's January. I'm ready for it to be uh May. So <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. But I want one blizzard. One blizzard. I'm good for it. I still gotta work, it doesn't do anything for me. Just work from home. <laughs> you can't go to work. It's too busy. <laughs> it's too busy. <laughs> it's too busy outside. There's too many snows. <laughs> you could wish. get in trouble. Yeah. I wish a car was. accident. Car accident. Yeah. It's dangerous out there. Candy. So how about this UFC card over the weekend? Let's start with the pay-per-view buys. Did you see what they were no. talking? What are they talking? 1.6 million pay-per-view buys. Well, I stand corrected. I thought it was going to be way less than that. It's about double what I said, I think. Yeah, I said about a million. I was still off. And uh, if you look at the website traffic, we had a ton of people hitting our site up for, you know, Conor McGregor type Streams. stuff. Um, what else? DraftKings, FanDuel, so tons of betting. I think DraftKings, they were smart. They were trying to do this bet and lure people in. Like, bet a dollar and you can win $257 if McGregor knocks Poye out in the first yeah. round. And, uh, you know, how about all the streaming issues I saw, too? Because this, I don't know, but when I turned the pay-per-view on, it didn't start until 9.03. Really? I'm like, what is going on here? This never happens. They're always on point. And the amount of fighters that were talking shit, because there, there's a list of all these guys that, you know, fuck, I can't get on. I'm not able to log in. Anyone else having it? The app crashed. 
uh, there's probably about 15, 20 fighters that couldn't fucking get in to see the fights. And then ESPN had to issue credits to a bunch of people too. So they're offering wow. partial credits, full credits. But I wonder if that's also they weren't preparing for the amount of people. So the back okay. end couldn't handle whatever that number was. Is it, is it 1.6? I have no idea. Because this is still somewhat new to ESPN, like this whole pay-per-view streaming you know we're on what a year ish yes. year and a half but they need to lube up their back end yeah so we get to the fight you know and they had i don't know what was with all the fucking drones they had a bunch of drones flying around the arena at the start the whole like, thing was just weird fucking and weird. I, I i feel like all all the crowd were all like sheiks or something <laughs> yeah but there were some jackasses during some of the fights because the woo birds came out it was woo, woo. oh no shut your fucking ass up we don't need this <laughs> no one high-end mma not lowbrow but mm -hmm. so Let's talk about the main event. We have Conor McGregor and Dustin Poirier. And I just will say this, and I'm going to ask you your opinion, that when Conor, well, one, it was weird seeing Conor walk out first. But to me, he looked nervous as fuck when he walked out. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we could talk about the fight. So what's your takeaways and impressions about this fight? Well, I think Dustin wore him out in the first round, uh, grinding with him. And although Connor was winning some of that, like dirty boxing and stuff, when they were throwing their elbow, their shoulders and stuff, yeah. the foot stomps, I think that wore Connor down. And and uh, the one thing I noticed was I felt like Poye had figured something out because Connor usually has that like that left he throws, but he throws it and he leans all the way in. And Poye kept coming over the top a couple times and tagging him um in that first round mm -hmm. i feel like he he just slow and like if connor had a stamina meter it was just doing this and then the leg kicks man the fucking calf kick that he was never checking he was eating them and just tore him up and uh i mean i'm kind of surprised that connor didn't have a little more because he usually starts a little faster right but it's it's what we talked about i, I feel like poye um showed that he improved more than connor improved and mm -hmm. he, he surpassed him obviously uh he so i thought it was a fantastic fight on Poye's part and connor just looked i mean he explains it on ring rust but i don't know man i don't know if he his cardio wasn't where it needed to be that's for sure so yeah i thought it was a real gimmicky win by fucking Poye. so let me come out and wrestle fuck this guy gimmick let me fucking calf kick this guy gimmick and then <laughs> knock him out. I'm like, if you were a man, you would have just stand and bang, okay. but he just wanted to gimmick this fight up and get his win gimmick that way. Gimmick the fight up. Okay. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah. So looking at McGregor, I will say he looked nervous and he looked rusty and looked more like he was preparing for a Manny Pacquiao boxing match than an MMA fight against Dustin Poirier because barely any kicks and even when he was checking the kicks, I think Poye was saying something. They had some weird exchanges when they were talking about it, but McGregor was saying he could hear Thiago Alves in, in the corner, and he was saying one of the calf kicks sunk in early, and Thiago Alves said, that was a good one. And I was in my head thinking, you bastard, it was a good one. <laughs> you know, he's talking about shit like that. And uh, Poye talking about this fight, which was interesting he was talking about his mindset he said i felt his presence less and his aura less i just saw another fighter tonight and i think the first fight i was kind of a deer in the headlights you would say this time i was just fighting another man another man that bleeds just like me and i knew that so like that's a, a weird takeaway too because you don't really think about or it's been a while since i've even thought about like the aura of a fighter when you're like Oh my God, you're fighting Conor McGregor. And I think another thing that probably played into this factor is you're not fighting in front of 20 fucking thousand hostile fans. You're mm -hmm. fighting in front of 2000 barely audible fans, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, God, all this is kind of playing in the Dustin's wheelhouse. And I didn't even take into account some of that shit. Mm -hmm. I was just like, ah, oh, it's fucking Conor McGregor, right? He should do well, but uh, not so much. Cause I was watching this with my daughter and she's like, who's going to win? I'm like, well, 
the Conor McGregor should win, but this is MMA and anything can and will happen. So, mm-hmm. and it sure did. But, you know, you look at McGregor, he's only had four MMA fights in the last five years. And I think that showed. And I, I don't know, I mean, you know, it's, it's always a combination of both, right? It's Poye, mm-hmm. like you're saying, has advanced and looked sharper and fucking yeah. a lot stronger, a lot more powerful. And, mm-hmm. you know, McGregor just just not I think it is part of it is just not active enough and I think my biggest takeaway from this fight is uh let me find it here I gotta pull this up you know Dustin Poirier's got a really fucking hot wife yeah I knew you were gonna bring that up I don't there even know go. what I'm sharing here am I sharing the right screen uh you did but then you unshared it okay <laughs> so yeah like holy christ because she almost fell out of her top that's all i'm gonna say that's my uh, biggest takeaway from this uh, fight you like it yep i bet you he had a good celebration uh potentially <laughs> <laughs> she's like, no one doubts my man he <laughs> kicks <your> ass <laughs> oh no wow. like fucking straight southern you know good times louisiana party uh, okay her- pants i don't know what that accent was but it was brilliant (laughs) i don't know either i'm the worst and i don't care (laughs) but uh fuck i was trying to think what else but so what do these guys do next because you know this wasn't a title fight probably should have been because with all that bullshit with habib he's he's fucking done fighting right i think we can all just agree on that but it's like what the hell do you do at 155 and I'll I throw this out and say what each guy wants McGregor wants a rematch shocking right he wants to finish the trilogy with Poye and then Poye says he wants to fight Nate Diaz so I don't know <laughs> there's so many guys out there I've got ideas of who but I don't know if you have some uh, thoughts I like I like both of those options but uh, I would really like to see Poye fight Diaz and then Connor maybe fight the loser of that. Mm. Poye fight Diaz. Uh, I could see that. I mean, it's like 155, I don't think you can really do wrong with – there's so many good guys. My initial impression is you got to have a title fight. Poye is obviously in it. I, I think you do Poye versus Charles Oliveira – for the 155 title because Oliveira keeps getting fucked and he's like on a million fight win streak. Mm-hmm. I would love to see McGregor and Justin Gaethje because, man, if you don't want to check a leg kick, there's my boy Justin <laughs> feeds you a steady diet of those. Mm-hmm. And then you have Michael Chandler out there who just you know got that win over Hooker. I'd probably pa- match him up against Tony Ferguson mm. or Nate Diaz versus anybody, you know? Because he's still in the wings. Yeah, like, I mean, I like it all. I think the lightweight division suddenly became a whole lot more interesting to me, uh, you know, based on what just happened in these in these last two fights for, yeah. um, I don't know. I, I, I'm happy with any of it, honestly. I, I can't say I like one thing more than the other. Uh, no, I mean, you can just mix and match all those guys. I think you're going to yeah. have fucking... You got, what, seven solid guys that you can pretty much interchange in and out. I mean, fuck, it. UFC would never do a tournament, but you could even do a tournament. I like it's that just, idea. You know, <sighs> Poye's even talking, too. He said he's got no interest in fighting Michael Chandler and said, you know, I'll just fucking sell hot sauce if you're going to make me fight that guy for the title. Yeah. Like, I get it. Mm-hmm. And then why why is McGregor getting all this hate too? Because even Jake Paul was jumping in on that and saying, "Hey, remember that fifty million dollar offer that I gave you to fight me? It's ten thousand dollars now." <laughs> <laughs> like you guys, quit being fucking jack legs, right? It's just yeah. like night, man. It was not. I I mean, I don't know. He came in a whole lot different. Very quiet this time around. So yeah, humble, quiet. Different Connor, maybe fatherhood has changed him a little. I don't. Yeah, I don't know if Dad Connor is good for fighting because be. it was more. Not that he's going through the motions, but he's just showing up to do work, mm-hmm. and it wasn't the right work, and just looked like he was really boxing and preparing to fight Manny Pacquiao, who it looks like that fight's not going to happen now since Connor took a loss, but. Mm-hmm. 
you know, it'd be interesting to see what he's going to do. Because, you know, the rumors were something that Connor got, like, I forgot who put the article out. I want to say it was Forbes said Connor got anywhere from 25 to 30 million for this fight. Mm -hmm. And I, Dustin got like a million or something right. plus pay-per-view points. And, you know, that could be pretty lucrative if we're talking like 1.6 million. Yeah. He probably made two, three, four million in this sucker. Yeah. So I don't, do you have anything else for uh, that fight? No. I'll just share the one cool poster that I finally saw the UFC sharing. Oh yeah, that's I like that one. Like who is this at Dosbrack? He does a lot of cool art, and they finally fucking uh, you know put something out with like legit UFC and UFC tweeting. So it was cool to see some of the guys that have been doing shit to finally get recognized and uh, put that out. Because I'm so sick of seeing just a fucking fucking poster just. Let me look at you and you look at me and let's both not smile in this fucking picture <laughs> yep. ever. I think I have one poster somewhere that has people smiling on it and I forgot which one it is, but it's just, it's dumb. Like let's, uh, let's do cool shit. And then, you know, some of the other fights, you know, like we were saying that hooker and Chandler fight. Well, Chandler looked good. He fucking ate a big leg kick and then he fucking just starched him. Yeah, I don't know what Hooker's game plan was in this fight. I mean, he seemed like a little bit uh, Homer Simpson like. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, like, let me just try this approach. Yeah, so I, I don't know, but I think Chandler probably, I would say perhaps the most exciting debut coming over from another mm -hmm. promotion out of any fighter that I recall, anyways. Looking very solid, lots of power, quick energy, you know, efficient, um, the whole nine yards. I mean, I, I think he's going to be a force to be reckoned with. So, yeah, way better than I thought coming into the UFC. Yeah. And then some of the other fights, like you got a lot of stanky leg uh, knockouts in the earlier fights where people getting cracked. And, so it's a decent card. It's just, you know, there's a lot of grappling at times where I didn't want fucking grappling. And yeah, uh, I don't know. Do you have anything else for 257? Uh, oh, just the one thing. Um, if you heard the whole thing about the streaming uh, yeah. situation. So Dana had an interview post-fight, and he was talking about that they knew who this – there was – basically they said before the fight that they were going to crack down on streamers. Uh, and they had pinpointed someone, apparently, who was hosting the stream and were about to, like, unleash the Kraken. And this guy apparently turned all that off and decided to sell the pay-per-view on his stream and then went offline. And Dano said, <laughs> from here on out, every UFC, they're going to find one streamer and go after them balls to the wall. They have some new technology, apparently, that can... It sounds like uh, wolf tickets to me. It's total wolf tickets, because what are you going to... You can't go after people... Uh, you're going to go after someone in Russia? Good luck with that. What are you and doing like, there? What? what well, I'm you... trying to pour some vodka, but <laughs> I want to pour it on my lap like I usually do. Okay. And uh, yeah, I thought it was funny because Dana was talking about, yeah, we're watching this guy. We got his, uh, we're watching his house. We got his phone tapped. I'm like, hey, that's fucking illegal. You can't do that shit. You can't be tapping phones, you lying son of a bitch. Mm -hmm. You just have to accept there's going to be a, some amount of piracy. And when you want to charge $70 a pay-per-view, you got to expect there's going to be a lot of fucking piracy. Just uh, the cost of doing business. So yeah. catching one person, what is that going to accomplish? Don't know. Nothing. Zero. Is it going to stop anybody? No. No. It's going to do a fucking thing. So just save your time and don't even talk about it. It's a lot of vodka. <laughs> what? It's not all vodka. <laughs> He's got a 16 ounce of vodka. Hey. I don't know what you're talking about because this will get us banned from everything and go <laughs> don't you can, you can. drink. That bottle's very empty. <laughs> I don't know anything about that. I don't drink alcohol on weekends. <sighs> so how about let's go this route. Let me see what I can find here. I want to give props out to um, Bernie Sanders and all the fucking memes oh, that are out there. So, Jesus Christ, let's start here. Fantastic. So, here oh, we go. That's a good one. I He's like hanging out, little planes, trains, automobiles. Someone got a fucking tat of Mr. Uh, Bernie Sanders. And, like, wow, that's impressive. Uh, fucking, he's in the audience for the UFC. Khabib almost jumped on him. 
You got that arm yep. bar one. Yep. A fucking rear naked choke on McGregor. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, I like this one probably the best. Jamie Lee Curtis tweeting this out. Okay, I'll play. That was pretty solid. Uh, she has like both parts, doesn't she? I don't know. I think she has a man and a female part. part. I haven't seen her naked. I wouldn't know. Me neither. But that's I think that's that's the rumor around the campfire that she's got the both. <sighs> extra ah, whatever. Extra pleasure. She looked hot in that fucking movie. She did Something. with Arnold, right? Uh, what was that called? True Impact? No, no. Hang on. Uh, <laughs> I can. It's fucking on all the time too. Not you know True Impact. Is. Oh my god. Beyond. It's one of those movies with uh, that guy, Tom Arnold. Arnold Schwarzenegger. I know. Arnold Schwarzenegger, Tom Arnold. Oh, Tom Arnold's in it, too. And Jamie Lee Curtis. Body of Lies? No. Body something. True Lies. There you true go. Lies. <laughs> I Getting had there. Body of Lies and True Impact. <laughs> <laughs> the internet is right in front of us, but that's, we're too fucking lazy. I don't know how to do that's that. That's no fun. That's no fun. No. So what else is happening out there? Well, Stephen Miocic and Francis Ngannou, dos set for UFC 260 main event happening March 27th. Uh, I don't know where this one's happening at, but it's happening. Well, uh, probably in Vegas. Yeah. So, um, are you excited? What do you think? Hmm. I'm just excited because the winner is supposed to fight John Jones. I mean, yeah. Well, I guess we'll see. If Ngannou has improved, I can't remember the last time that fucking guy fought. Right, I, I want to say that he's just been sitting around waiting for the title fight because it seems, you know, Miocic is injured. He's not. He's a firefighter. He's not. He's whatever. Right. He's about as interesting as you know, looking at a white wall. <sighs> That's racist. Why? Oh, racist. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> what if it's a black wall? Is that super racist? That's then? not racist. Then okay. I don't know. I'm just saying he's got no flavor. And uh, I'm just excited to see John Jones fight a heavyweight. Just, I feel like this is all fucking wolf tickets. We're all waiting around. And they won't give it to us. They're not going to give it to us. They'll never give it to us. No. I'm looking back through some stuff. So uh, I want to talk about hockey and their shitty advertising again. So uh -oh. you know how I was saying, oh, they're just going off the fucking rails with advertising. It was so bad the other day. I'm watching the Blackhawks and they can't even get the advertising right. So the fucking advertising is floating over the ice <laughs> and over the players because this advertising is supposed to be down here on the boards or potentially up here on the glass, you know. And there were four sections where this was covering up people playing. Like, oh, my God, if you're going to whore yourselves out, at least do it right. <laughs> like, yes. I don't like, – they even had a car in the arena. That's how bad the advertising is getting. There's no fans. We have a fucking car sitting at the end of one of the fucking corners. Like, oh, my God. It's horrible. <sighs> they need – I don't know when they're going to get fans back. It doesn't sound like it's happening this season, but – you know, at least it's nice to see, as we were talking about football, that playoff football is getting it. And how about, did you see, like, prices for the Super Bowl <laughs> tickets? Uh -uh. I forgot what they said. Something like real shitty seats, like the worst seat you could buy was nine grand or something like that. Whoa. Yeah. Because I mean, there's get... a limited number of seats, is that why? Probably. But, you know, it's in Florida, so I think they're pretty loose with – how many people they yeah. put it in? Lucy Goosey. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. Fuck them. You got anything else news or? I got one more thing. Go it's not a, not a happy story. Uh, did you see this? Uh, let me share my screen. BJ Penn was recently arrested for a DUI over the yeah. weekend. And I got the videos. Let's check it out. Uh, here he is. Can you hear that? No. Mm -mm. I got nothing. You got nothing. Oh, hey, this is, uh, 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 fucking rest me, uh, uh, be Babu. I'm be Japan. Here we go. Here Fuck we go. you, Matt Hughes. You the money, I get up only two. You right now. Only yeah. We don't need guns. We don't need guns, you fucking dummy. You dumb. <laughs> we don't hmm. need guns. You fucking 
Uh, apparently saying they're all they're all niggas and they're all hungry or something. I don't know what's happening, but uh, how the mighty have fallen, man. He's obviously extremely intoxicated and uh, getting arrested for crashing his truck into a mall or something like this. Who has a higher IQ, BJ Penn or Matt Hughes right now? <sighs> Probably Matt Hughes. Yeah, I just saw an interview with him and I was. I don't wish that shit on anybody, but man, that's rough. Both of them are in rough spots. Maybe they should fight. I mean, they'll set one of them straight. <laughs> I don't you know. You can't say that, Matt. That's terrible. Too soon. What? <laughs> I don't know who wins that fight right now. I really don't. Isn't I, BJ I, two and one in that thing? Something like that. That would sound about right. But I'm just saying uh, where both of those guys are at right now. I don't know who has the advantage. It might be Hughes. And that's not to say a lot because fucking BJ is losing a fucking average guy on the fucking street. I don't know. Hmm. Let's get out of that. Let's move right along. Let's let's lighten it up. I, I saw that article. I passed on it because I'm like, oh man, that's tough. It's a tough show. So let's uh let's do tweet of the week. This is all things comedy. It says, here we go. Ah. Perfect. Hang on. Gwyneth Paltrow's vagina candle reportedly explodes in UK woman's home. Oh, I would like to have her vagina explode in my home. Apparently she's a squirter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now we're talking. <laughs> hey. I'll buy that for a dollar. Okay. It, well, it's like 75, but it might be well worth it. <laughs> have an exploding vagina in your thing. All right, let's do some ass and nuts unless you got anything else. You got any other news? Nope, or? I'm good. Okay. I'm good. So Zane Simon wrote an article for Bloody Elbow titled Max Holloway Just Redefined MMA. Like, what? He says, this is just the first paragraph and then like some other bullshit. It says the trend didn't start with Max Holloway and I'll doubt it'll end with him. But nonetheless, Blessed has molded himself into the face of a mixed martial arts revolution. No, it's not the Machida era all over again or whatever BJ Penn was doing in that third Frankie Edgar fight. <laughs> uh, the skill Holloway put on display is already out in the MMA meta. Holloway's just made it his signature. And then the thing is, elite mixed martial arts in 2021 is all about volume striking. So my question is, is it? Is, is he redefining shit? No. <laughs> Thank you. Like, what the <laughs> fuck, man? What the fuck? Not about volume striking. Oh, my God. Just because one guy goes off does not mean that's the fucking future of MMA. Jesus fucking Christ. There's so many other people doing great things. Look at Adesanya. Look at Poye. Anybody else? Fucking just name a fighter. Shevchenko. Look at that. I can't hear anyone else, but uh, yes, I don't I mean, even watch. Somebody does else. something one time, and all of a sudden, it's it's just it's his style, right? So, yeah, he's had a he that's his style, like a Diaz, right? Volume mm -hmm. doesn't always win you fights. It's it doesn't just, when you have a willing dance partner that's willing to stand right in front of you and be punched in the face, and he's too tough for his own good. That's why that happens, not because fucking he's. Uh, volume striker and that's redefining MMA you fucking tard I'm sorry mm. but I, that article is offensive it's very offensive let's go down the line of another one so the athletic said rank UFC fighters purely based on entertainment value in the cage so they ranked the top two asking who number three was and they said number one Conor McGregor number two Israel Adesanya and number three is blank and I think the whole list is on their site but like, what do you think of just those two on the top? Entertaining? Yeah. Uh, Adesanya and uh, Conor McGregor. I mean, I think McGregor is great at the hype game. So he gets me excited to watch fights. But I'm not sure he's the best in-cage entertainer. And Adesanya sure as shit isn't. Just no. see him versus Joel Romero. And right. how you can even have him on the fucking list when he's hit, yeah, when he's on point and he's doing matrix type shit, sure. But who consistently delivers? 
is Justin Gaethje, and he's not even he should be fucking number one on every list. Mm -hmm. That is Mr. Entertainment. Like mm -hmm. any of the guys that are fucking <clears throat> getting all the uh, performance bonuses and submission bonuses. You yeah. can even put uh, Charles Oliveira in there for all of his fucking subs. Two Bronx. And what. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When you know something's going to happen no matter what. I mean, I don't know. I don't Michael, know I think... Michael Chandler comes to mind too. I mean, he's pretty exciting to watch. Mm -hmm. So although he's new in the UFC, but I don't know. He was exciting before he showed up. So it's still exciting. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I just, I don't, I don't know. I don't see Con Connor's. I don't know. Maybe we're just fickle. I'm soured on him. Boo. Yeah. I think everybody is though. He, he's yeah. sold wolf tickets here. Mm. It's you can talk the game and everything works and you win. But the problem is when you lose and it's not just like you lost once. Now you're on a trend of losing here. Yeah. Diaz, Nurmagomedov, Poye. Mm -hmm. right, come on. Uh, and then did you hear about that other fighter? There was uh, Dana White. I wrote this down. He told the story of Otman Azatar, who was supposed to fight at UFC 257. He said he and his team cut off their wristbands, and they gave them to someone outside the bubble. And then that guy taped the wristband on and came in with a bag went into a room, shimmied across four balconies, went into Ottman's room, dropped the bag off, changed his clothes, and then left. So now this Ottman character, he gets cut from the UFC for it. But my question is, what the hell was in the bag? What was in the bag, man? <laughs> That's what we need to know. There was a picture of his kids. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, illegal drugs a severed head severed head. this is body Hopefully. bags remember that joe that joe pesci movie eight heads in a duffel bag or something like that that was just on oh. the other day it was david spade in that one <laughs> yeah he was jesus christ <laughs> <laughs> that sounds correct i don't know that'd be about right what a weirdo yeah that's not smart that's a great way to get cut from the ufc all right here's the next one roots of combat it's like, choose your team. Two will protect you, and the rest will try to kill you. You have Mike Tyson, Jean-Claude Adam, Conor McGregor, Chuck Norris, Floyd <laughs> Mayweather Jr., and a Bruce Lee. I mean, this is really like, uh, is this even a question? No. I'm going to take Chuck Norris as number yes. one. You have to take Chuck Norris. He's got guns, motherfucker, and he's got action genes. And I mean, it's a toss-up for me between Bruce Lee and Van Damme, but... I'm going to have to go probably Van Damme. I agree 100%. <laughs> Jean Claude, goddamn, he's fucking shit up. Have you not seen the movies? These guys <laughs> fuck people up. It's not even a question. Uh, Bruce weighs like a uh, buck 15. This guy, uh, Norris has guns. He's just fucking, everyone's dead. Two seconds. Uh, we win, walk away. Yes. Get all the bitches. <laughs> Catching rays, banging chicks. Yes. White Island. That's what they should be doing on Fight Island. Catching rays and banging chicks? Something like that. They know. probably do do that. All right, here we go. If you could only play one video game for the rest of your life, which game would it be? Wow. I don't know. It's tough. Probably an online game, right? So at least you have social interaction, like an MMO of some sort. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. I don't know which MMO, though. I don't I don't even know what's an MMO anymore. The last yeah. MMO I played was Warcraft. So. Yeah, I'm not getting back into that shit. Uh, that something like tough. that, maybe. Some kind of online game where I can build a world and have virtual sex with all my minions. Yeah. Now, you have The Witcher 3 could be some kind of uh, MMO or Witcher type with those ladies cool. and uh, something along those lines maybe some kind of red dead redemption crossover that's fully vetted out when they launched the game and not two years later hey here's all this shit that should have been in it when it launched like all these people tend to do mm -hmm. all right here we go so rough and rowdy is having a ring card girl competition for their upcoming card and we will have to rank said ladies who do you think the top three are on this list? Uh, top right, number one. Okay. Mm, middle top, number two. Sure. And then, uh, wow, that's a tough one. 
I can't tell. Bottom right looks <laughs> weird. It doesn't look real. So I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to have to go lower left. Are these all is this a trick? No, because we're in the same league because I, I went my number one was the one in the middle. My number two is the one on the top right. And then when I got the three, I said, I think I'm just going to fucking kill them all. <laughs> I, like no part, like too young, uh, too not right, too young. And yeah, this one looks fake or too young. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Top right. Solid. Yeah. I'll take it. It's all good. It's all good in the hood. And Rodrigo Machado will close it out. It's time. Pound sign, Nuts Rule. Pound sign, Matt Rape Train. Pound sign, Ingo Sugar Daddy. Would you rather be your own boss or work for someone else? What kind of exactly. fucking question is that? I like being a hooker and paying my uh, pimp money. Yes. And then sometimes I get to be um, sexed with him. There's different kinds of pimps I've learned. Oh, yeah? I don't okay. know about I don't know all the kinds. There's the kind that beat you. There's the kind that loves Ooh, you. I like that kind. <laughs> there's a kind. good beating. Yeah, there's all kinds of different kinds of pimps, apparently. They have different names. I can't remember what they are now. Is there a documentary I should check out? <laughs> I need to uh, boost my pimp game. My pimp game is pretty strong, but it could always improve. Yeah, I'll check it out. I don't think it's a documentary. I heard this from someone who was in, in the game, in, in the business oh, hey. <laughs> previously. Hey. In the previous. Hey now. Yes. I like that. Okay. <laughs> okay. We, we, we want to be our own boss, period. Yes. You never want to work for someone because it fucking sucks when they don't want to listen to you and your awesome ideas and they think they know how to do everything. Blah, blah, blah. Right. Would you rather be on a survival reality show or a dating game show? I think dating would be way more fun. At least you get the bang tricks. Yeah. Just fucking <laughs> 247. What's your nickname? I'm fuck face 247 <laughs> wait i'm not i do the fucking of the faces or something i don't know, <laughs> I don't know what's going on here <laughs> oh my God. fucking pimps and faces getting fucked hey by the way we have some new advertisers for this <laughs> okay for this, this segment of the show is brought to you by uh, uh huggies <laughs> yeah one of them new sponsors depends <laughs> yeah as i should like to shit my pants yeah mm -hmm. would you rather be too busy or be bored too busy yeah it's always good to be busy because yeah. then time flies by especially if you're working some shitty job I agree. i'm sure everybody's done that and you know Mm -hmm. Is what it is. Would you rather watch the big game at home or live at the stadium? Uh, probably live at the stadium. I think people. I like the energy of the crowd. <sighs> yeah, as long as can I have uh, a booth? I want my own thing. I don't want to be in the fucking riffraff of people. Yeah, yeah. I feel like you know going to these fucking MMA events. I don't ever remember a sweep being an option. Nope. Hmm. Been to hockey games, many of those in the suites, and been to basketball games in the suites, and that's the shit. Especially when you don't know that you have a fucking eating disease <laughs> and you can fucking, <laughs> hey man, you want this caramel apple the size of your head? Like, <laughs> fuck yeah, I do. <laughs> like, give me that one and that one. And they just bring out like all sorts of foods and yeah. festivals and you can have your own liquor in there and it's yeah. much more enjoyable than being like a peasant. But, you know, <laughs> Damn like the peasants. King kingpin, but I'm just, you know, it's nice to be taken <laughs> care of when people take care of you. That's I what agree. happens when you're hooking for a living. That's right. And you don't get a candle here. It smells. Oh, good. you smell like your vagina. It does not. Ugh. I don't have a vagina, so that's I unfortunate. <laughs> I, wish yeah. I, I wish I did. I wish I did. I hear you. <laughs> Fuck Mary Kill Celebrity Edition number one twenty three. Hottest cheerleaders of the world number four. So we have Caitlin from San Diego Chargers, Mandy from the Arizona Cardinals, and Ashley from the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, let's go. Okay. Caitlin, San Diego Chargers. Yeah, not bad. Not bad. Yep. Solid. Mandy from the Arizona Cardinals. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. And Whoa. then Ashley from the Atlanta Falcons. And that looks like crazy right there. That's going to be chaos. It's like a lot of trouble. That's why she's uh, dead. I, I think I'm going to have to kill her. Uh, bang the second one and marry the first. 
Shocking. I think we're in agreement. Shocking. That worked. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's what happened to Conor McGregor because I feel like when we both were talking about the fight initially, we both picked Conor McGregor, and every time we do that, that fucking whoever we picked loses. It's like clockwork. So I'm sorry, Conor McGregor. We fucked you. It's all our fault. We fucked you hard. Uh, you got your knowledge for? <laughs> I do. Uh, if you want to watch something crazy, uh, Netflix Bling Empire. It's the Bling Empire. Yeah, it's about some like you ever seen that movie Crazy Rich Asians? Like I've heard of it, never watched it. Well, it's a reality show, and these people are actually that rich, and it's just you're kind of and they're Asian, and you kind of go like, "What the fuck am I watching?" But you can't stop watching. I saw, I watched two episodes of it. I thought it was quite interesting. If you want to like have something funny to watch when you're in an altered state, I recommend that. Although you might not be able to take it. There's one guy that's pretty flaming gay on there and it's just I like, have problems with that. It's, it's a little it's a little obscene. So, but it's just I find it hilarious. So yeah. I don't mind if you're gay, but when you get flaming gay, <laughs> like it I lose my interest in whatever program I'm watching. Okay. You you can be on fire, just don't put it on TV. Gotcha. I don't know. I don't know. I got problems. So I saw this. Uh, I'll share this with you. I think I've seen everything in fighting until I saw this. What the? Funny. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> that's, that's epic. They must have practiced. You are better than time. I remember. <laughs> 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 that's pretty awesome. Painted nails too. Yeah, I love it. That's pretty. <laughs> <laughs> fuck? They got a minute fight breaking out over here. Yeah. But still predictable. He's nodding his head. <laughs> You're still predictable. <laughs> oh oh oh! Fuck. Oh. <laughs> I like the like long slide. Very interesting. Uh oh. <laughs> Death toll. Oh shit. <laughs> About to go down. Oh, 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 look at the speed on this motherfucker. That's quick. Oh, that's the end, huh? Yeah, apparently it's gonna end too soon. We don't know who won. It's kind of like we don't know what was in that bag. Got that fucking guy brought in at the fucking probably heads. I think you got your own white island. Ooh, what if it was like those shrunken heads? That'd be pretty epic. All right, you got anything else? Uh-uh. Yeah, I'm looking back through. I think it was about it. <sighs> I don't even know what the next card is. Hopefully something good. Michael Chiesa got a win in a fucking grappling heavy match versus Neil Magny. Mm-hmm. Good for him. I'll just yeah, say that. I agree. That's it. Let's shut down before you break stuff over there. I don't know what you're doing. You're trying to give yourself a head. I dropped Burger! some. That has been this week's edition of MA Nuts. My name's Ingo Weigel. Matt Grove, thanks for playing. 